So it's been about two weeks since I got the Osmo Pocket, so I'm just doing an update video on what I like, what I don't like, and um, so far it's been actually a really good device. I'll do a shoot in a couple minutes here, but I'll just go through some quick things. Um, first, I'm waiting for the polarizing filters to come out because it does it does need that, I think, to actually get a more cinematic look. Some of the third-party ones have come out, but the actual DJI ones have not come out yet, and there's no... Um, uh, estimated date yet on when they're going to have those out so hopefully those are coming soon the control wheel is out but I think I'm going to wait for the accessory pack that has a Wi-Fi module as well as the GoPro accessory mount um, because it actually comes out a lot cheaper by probably like $30 so um, if you get the combo package versus each of the items separately because the Wi-Fi module and the control stick are $59 each and then the accessory mount is 19 so um, if you get those you're, you almost get the accessory mount for free in the bundle package um, two of the three are out the control wheel and the accessory mount but the actual Wi-Fi module is not out yet so I don't know um, when that'll be out hopefully soon they have it listed on the site but obviously the accessory bundle is not available either because that's part of it um, Size-wise, it's great, works very well, easy to carry everywhere. Um, the screen is a little hard to see, um, just from the standpoint of, you know, it's so small. But you basically see what's in frame, and you know from there that you're good. I actually have this sitting on a table right now. Um, and it's a little bit further out than arm's range because that way I'm sure it'll get the focus because it can't focus super close and that's what I think some of the issues were with the focusing initially um, again size is perfect carry it everywhere um, I rarely use the phone attached to it once I get more into the pro mode and once the uh, ND filters are out I think I'll be using the pro mode some more but for right now I'm pretty much using it as a standalone item um, 4k 60 frames a second or 30 frames a second that's pretty much all I need for a quick uh, vlogging as I go along um, low lights a little tough for it. it doesn't do bad it's just with the smaller sensor it doesn't do ideal either so for that I mean I probably use my mirror list with something that I really wanted to capture that was super important but for just walking around or whatever at dusk it still works very well um, nighttime without any kind of light or anything that is a uh, will be a problem um, as for mounts, I do wish it had the tripod mount at the bottom. Like right now, you can't see it because it's underneath, but I have my iPhone laying because it's a graded table, and it actually won't stand on that on its own because there's holes, and um, it'll kind of tipple over. So I have the phone face down, and I'm using the back of the phone as kind of just a smooth surface for it to sit on, where if it had some kind of tripod mount, I could put it between the, um, between the actual grates and actually have it stand on its own. Um, it's actually wobbling there a little bit. Um, I'm hoping that the gimbal will um, actually take that into account and actually stabilize it. Um, the last thing is the mic, um, or the mics, I should say. There's one on one side facing me and one on the bottom. What I'm going to have to see is in this footage because the one that's on the bottom right now, I have it sitting face down, so I don't believe that's picking up anything. And with the wind, it is a little bit of a problem because you do get a lot of that wind noise. I'm looking for some kind of um, windsock that I can put on the bottom for the bottom mic when it's not covered, but the other one's right next to the button, so it's going to be a lot harder to actually cover that up and put some kind of wind screen on um, at, the, at the mic that faces you. So that's about it. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough. There's an old barn that they've refurbished and it has a couple of the buildings left so just a quick little walk through of what it can do it's about 3 30 in the midwest and uh so the sun's starting to set so hopefully we'll get some decent lighting i'm going to shoot it all at 4k 60 frames per second it'll all be walking handheld and not hooked up to the actual life arm just walking around i'll just do a quick tour of this it's kind of it uh coming up on the golden hour here so we'll see how the camera actually does so i'm just gonna walk around not not anything specific i'm just gonna kind of just walk around and see what they have this was a real working farm for about 100 years and then the park district took it over and uh just restored the buildings shooting right into the sun there so that's probably not good um so they made it kind of like an educational 
area and just kind of put up some artwork and stuff. So this is in Northern Illinois. So I'll just keep walking here and go by some of the buildings. This is a normal walk right now. I probably walk about three miles an hour give some kind of gauge and I have the camera outward 45 degrees I seem to get better um, stabilization that way and I will check in a minute and tell you guys what mode I have the uh, the gimbal in this is a shaded area again I'm not using the iPhone I'm doing it strictly off the one inch screen of the Osmo Pocket. So let's find different things to shoot just to make the videos a little more interesting. So this didn't want to do a tech review sitting at a desk because I'm sure people would rather see what it can do versus, you know, on paper what the actual device is spec to do. I like to do more real world examples. They're having an issue with people breaking the window so they just put uh, printed windows. You probably can't even see it from here but it's better than the windows getting broken. It's looking up. This is the uh, one of the barns. This might have been the maintenance one. I'll have to find the sign for that. Oh, this is a hay barn. So you can get an idea of text-wise. You know how we can do for that. And I'm probably about three feet off the building to give you an idea of the, um, you know, how close I am to the actual buildings. We might be able to see in here. I don't know if they block the windows now. You can see some, but it probably won't come out in here. Oh, I guess there's some. An old thermos, or a whole thermometer here. There is some wind kicking up, actually a lot right now. So we'll see how the microphones do. Again, I'm looking for some kind of windshield or windscreen. It's great for that kind of thing. You can get right through there. This is a carpenter shop. I'm gonna go back farther. So the sun is almost directly behind me. And there I'm shooting into the sun, but we're gonna walk to the original. This is the original house, and then this is the second one that they built. And actually somebody still lives there right now. We'll walk up to this one. It's very cold. I should have brought gloves. This one I don't think is ever open. The old front door. You can see how it's not even straight anymore. And for some reason, there's a second door here, which doesn't really make sense. And it looks original, too, so. It's actually a really old keyhole there. They kind of painted over it, unfortunately. See, it used to have a cover to it.
There's an actual garden, an outhouse, chicken coops, cow barn, silos. Again, I kind of wish I had the control wheel so I could actually just mount this on the railing right here and then, um, you know, do a really quick pan with the control wheel. But I haven't purchased that yet because I'm waiting on the wireless module just to get the entire expansion pack. I really do love the small size though that I could just pop this thing in my pocket and be good. There's the old outhouse. The old weather vane up there. So there's only like four more buildings, so this will be a quick video. This is a hog house coming up here. And I'll do the signs again just so people can see the. Um, the sharpness so if you could read the text you could pause it in uh, on YouTube if you want to actually read the text <clears throat> so that was a hog house and here's a chicken coop let's see how close I can get to it. looks like it's reflecting me in the background which is strange maybe it's just my eyes Again, his fake windows because they kept getting broken out. Oh, that one actually is the original. So is that one. Then we have this large barn. I don't know if this is a granary. Yeah, it's a granary. The colors look very accurate. I'm just on auto white balance. And then this big structure is the milking barn and the milking processing area. It looks like a couple of the windows are still intact. I think you can actually see the actual area where they used to... Uh... Boy, these windows are really dirty. Yeah, it's going to be hard to see in there. I'm trying to block the glare. Kind of the stalls. We'll go around the other side here. Oh, they're all fake windows now. It's too bad that they got broken out. I think that's a 220 volt outlet. That almost looked like I could get in there for a minute. See if this side's any better. Nope, too much reflection. So that's where we were. I think, I think that might, oh, there's the old uh, windmill. Oh, this is the main barn. It's really hard to see in there. See so what this little building is. I used to use this straight up and down, but now I keep it at a 45 degree angle. Oh, it's a milk house. So I got to remember to keep it at 45 degrees because I kind of want to keep it straight up sometimes and I'm talking and don't realize that I switched it out. Let's see if we can see anything in there. It's up above my head, so I don't know if I'm seeing anything or not.
little bench. Weather vane, windmill. Oh, I forgot the silos are back here too. It's like a massive trough. I don't know what it was for. Actually, there was a pipe leading out, so it must have been something with the uh, the milking area. Going left and right, get an idea. And get between the two silos and do a quick pan up. Oh, the backside was an animal burn. Trying to get that in there. We go. It should be in screen pretty well. Again, I purchased this. I was not given the uh, DJI Osmo Pocket. I did get it day one. I got it at actually a Best Buy. <clears throat> they only had one in stock, so I picked it up. Luckily, I got it when I did at lunch because the other Best Buys by me were all out by like 4 o'clock. I think they got more stock in after that, but it's still, uh, as they come in, they pretty much go. So hopefully they'll get the supply. Right now, I'm more interested in getting the accessories. I mean, it could do most of what you want out of the box. It's just, um, you know, the accessories will just make it that much better. And I'm freezing, so I'm kind of shaking here a little bit. But it looks like the gimbal's handling it pretty well. That's the two silos. Coming down on the barn. And actually there's a little hole here. Stick the camera through part of the hole. I don't know if it'll see anything. Could just be pitch black in there too. I was actually in follow mode. I forgot to tell you guys what mode I was in. I kind of got going there and I saw one building after the other and forgot. But that was in I'm follow mode. So if you want to get an idea, 4K, 60 frames per second, but I'm going to post uh, 4K at 30 frames per second because there's really nothing I need to slow down. Unless when I go to post, I decide to. Everything you'll see will be directly out of the camera. I might change the speed, but if I do, I'll indicate that. It's just a remake of a sign they used to have, I guess. And that is it. Here I'm shooting an amusement park in the uh, Midwest, Six Flags Great America. And you can see the Superman coaster going. It's the first time they've been open in the winter. I don't have a ticket for today, so I'm just shooting from the outside. It's about 35 degrees, so it's pretty cold for the people on there. And obviously there's no zoom on the Osmo Pocket, so it's pretty much what you see is the point of view you're going to get. It's right at the top of the hill now, going over on the left. And those people are probably really cold. It'll be coming back around here in about 20 seconds. Just went through a pretzel loop, and now it's going to do some uh, left and right banking. Pretty much center screen. There it comes. See how much sound you can hear. There's not a lot of uh, theme park sound going on. But I thought it would just be something different to shoot with the Osmo Pocket. Now that I'm back home, I'll go through some of the pros and cons after two weeks of using the DJI Osmo Pocket. 
video video quality is really good um again there's no tripod mount so doing um setting it up just anywhere is makes it a little difficult 4k 60 frames per second is a definite plus um no external mic input though what's coming is not out yet and i think it's needed for the windy times um video is very sharp the focus does wander it's pretty rare for me but it does happen the gimbal is very stable um, so another con is that the DJI accessories are not shipping yet. Um, the plus on the sound quality, as long as there's no wind, I think it's actually really good. There's actually no windscreen option that's available. The device is small and light, so you can take it anywhere. A lot of places that wouldn't let you bring in a big camera, it's no problem bringing it in. On the con side, the screen size is very small, so it's hard to see what's in focus. But if you do need that, you can just connect your smartphone to it and be able to see what's in focus pretty easily. It's just not as small with that option. All in all, I'm really happy with the DJI Osmo Pocket. I feel like it fits my needs along with my mirrorless camera.